ASMR whisper version. Yo. So hello. I haven't done one of these for a while. In fact, blimey, no, really. I've only done seven in the past. This is number last one was the 28th of October 2022. The first one was the 18th of August. Blimey. So yeah. So this is just, it's basically exactly <coughs> the same as the uh, Let Me Fall You To Sleep, except I'm trying not to wake up There's method in what I'm doing. I was going to say method in the madness, but that's <laughs> that rings a bit too true. Too close to the bone. So, basically, oh yes, yeah, uh, did I say only? Listen when you can safely close your eyes. Okay. These are going to kind of maybe I'm going to post these on the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. And I hope those of you that listen to that podcast are okay with this. Although it's not the same, it kind of is the same, but not, but is, but isn't, but is, you know, it's still my voice. talking about different things and it's still an opportunity to let go still a chance to allow yourself to relax of a little bit of quiet time. This is pretty quiet, I would say. And something I did yesterday news outlets online and I found 10 one of them was a YouTube channel the other one was a podcast but the rest seemed to be websites and by good news I don't mean religious just um, positive
most of the newspapers available in my country and some others in other countries digitally so I could look through the, through the web through the different newspapers and it was very difficult to find anything that was actually positive which it didn't surprise me but it was a little bit disappointing to read the newspapers and there'd always be some funny stories and not just funny stories but there'd always be some humorous things and there just isn't doesn't seem to be anything um, but I am generalizing so I'm just looking the first ones are of websites that I found. The first one was called the Good News Network. It says here, an authority on positive journalism founded in 1997. A section of the Today Show's website de de dedicated, de 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 dedicated to good news. Then this Daily Good uh, shares positive and uplifting news st stories from around the world. Next. descriptions that I got on chat G P T T P P T T P P and so yeah so this is I asked them to search so that's, this is the descriptions they're giving a blog, so I won't be looking at that. Mind you, I could, couldn't I? Yeah, so 1,000 things, a blog that counts the awesome things in life. Then Sunny Skies is another website, offers positive and inspiring news, pictures, videos, There's two left, and there might be loads out there, but these are the ones that were offered to me, offered uh, positive news. The first media organization in the world dedicated to quality, independent reporting about what's going on. Isn't that similar to what that other place said? Oh, the Good News Network, an authority on positive journalism founded in 1937. No, 1997. The 9 and the 3 look very similar. And your eyesight is... one on the list shares positive meaningful and inspiring stories so what I'm going to do 
just have a look. Yeah, just have a look. I have already looked for a couple of them yesterday. So let's have a look at the Good News Network, just briefly. So, I said she's got a few like sayings. Real knowledge is to know the extent of one's ignorance, Confucius. Some of these are their positive stories, but they focus on, on quite horrible situations. Um, for example, a cat going missing for five weeks, found safe. That's a lovely story, but there's the part of it, cat going missing for five weeks, that isn't so nice. You know what I mean, so I'd, I'd rather try and avoid those. And anything medical, I'm just a bit squeamish about stuff like that. Boy stops at a random house to leave a pep talk on strangers' doorbell cam. What? That's unusual. It's a video though, so I can't really... This is interesting. There's a mobile, a, ro a robot medic can roll into hazardous environments to provide medical treatment where doctors can't. A new robotic save lives in places where just humans aren't able to get to uh, re, you know, due to maybe the air condition or just the danger or whatever but it says it can be controlled by human medics and they can use the robot's arm to check for patients temperature, blood pressure heart rate Injections. Be used for the next vaccine. Uh, the game changing technology could save lives. Wow, it's good, isn't it? Blimey. Let's go back. Wow, it's taking time. The internet's very, very slow. Let's go back. I want to see whether or not that is just a video or it's... Oh no. A young boy was headed down a neighborhood sidewalk when he had a... He made a stop at a random house with a doorbell camera positive message of encouragement for a stranger. The video is on YouTube. Um, it doesn't identify the boy. Okay. But there's a picture of him, so I'm sure a few thousand people will know who he is. He looks directly into the camera with an earnestness and wisdom seemingly beyond his years. Now that sounded like I made it up, but that's what actually is actually written. And this is what he said. He said, um, you matter, right? There's always going to be someone who cares about you. You're a good person, no more. 
no matter what people say about you, you matter. I'm just trying to say something nice. You matter, man or girl, whoever you are. You matter to someone. Just keep that in mind. Don't forget it. That last sentence is quite powerful, isn't it? You matter. Whoever you are. You matter to someone. Whoever you are. You matter to someone. Keep that in mind. And don't forget it. Cool. You know, some people will say that. The bit where he says, You're a good person, no matter what people say about you. What are people saying about me? Who's saying stuff about me? That last sentence though. You matter to someone. Whoever you are, you matter to someone. Just keep that in mind. I like that. Just don't ring on my doorbell. I don't like to be disturbed. So, um, what's next? This next sentence, this next one, I don't know, my, I'm judging it straight away. I am, I'll be honest. It says, uh, this is the headline, Miss England. Inspires because that's like a beauty pageant. Miss England inspires girls to be rocket scientists after graduating with aerospace engineering degree. It's weird, it's just. I don't know. I would think that girls, young girls, or young boys, or older boys, and older girls, or young men, young girl, women, whatever, should hopefully feel that anyway. That they can potentially be whatever they want to be if they work hard enough and have the right attitude and aptitude and but saying that you know we're not we're not all cut out to do everything I think that's also worth you know it's not a negative I know that I, I don't think whatever I did I don't think I'd ever be a mathematician and no matter how badly I wanted to be a professional wrestler in the WWE, WWE, I still think it is WWF. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but I think it's important. I just someone when they're young or any age should be able to have aspirations, even if we don't succeed. It's a beautiful journey, you know, it's, I've had aspirations of being successful doing this for the last 17 years, I've not been successful, but I still do it, you know, it's, it's that, it's not always about the end result. I think it's 
so much of it is the journey. It's good to have goals. Goals. It's like the old saying, isn't it? If you don't, if you don't have a target, then you're unlikely to ever reach the target. If you're playing darts or bow and arrow if, you, if you're not aiming at the bullseye then the chance of hitting the bullseye is very 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 unlikely but anyway I should read the story <laughs> crowned Miss England Jessica Gagan is on a mission to become an astronaut just graduated 27 year old became the first ever red haired winner of the prestigious beauty pageant she's probably one of the oldest ones as well they're usually quite young just pageants generally are usually in the early 20s I think late teens early 20s so good for her she studied at Liverpool she now wants to use her degree and beauty queen title to inspire the next generation of female engineers here's another thing <laughs> I don't know but maybe I'm wrong but I'd imagine that the main people interested in garlands or beauty contests would be potentially men I'm not sure why women would want to unless they inspired to be a beauty queen maybe I don't know I don't really understand the whole thing I've never met anyone no actually I did when I was in the sea cadets I saw we used to have like the local beauty pageant person and they'd walk around or a, uh, they'd, they'd ride at the carnival and have a tiara on their head and a thing across their body with miss whatever and I didn't really understand I still don't, to be honest with you. I remember watching them on television. And you just... Because they used to be on prime time telly. Like Miss World. Stuff like that. Miss UK. And then Miss Europe. And then Miss World. Or Miss Commonwealth. I'd watch it there was a load of women in bikinis that's the only reason I was watching it I was a child at the time I wouldn't lower myself these days I'll tell you why because I don't televise it anymore I don't need to watch it oh this is cool so Jessica now spends a lot of time visiting schools up and down the country giving free talks about STEM subjects aiming to advertise them for the next generation that is really cool I know I'm not joking around in that but it's a pretty amazing person that she's given her time especially at she's still like a, a young age to be travelling around trying to encourage young children to maybe follow their dreams when she's kind of only at the beginning of following her own dreams about going into space and things like that so good luck to her okay I'm just something about it's with boxing as well the 
nice to let Marine girls in a lot of the boxing that I see on television. So if you don't know what ring girls are, um, it's not about their rings, it's about they go inside the ring and they hold up a plaque, you know, for the next round, like round four or round three or I won't list every round. And then at times when the boxers are being uh, announced, They'll stand there, and then when the results of the fight is being announced, they'll stand in the ring. And there's like a gormless look on their face, a pretend smile. Yeah, like the mouth is smiling, but the eyes aren't quite often. just seems a little bit outdated is you get men up there in thongs but then you could argue we have that all night long with the boxers if it's a male you know boxing we got sweaty men with muscles for 90 minutes or 45 minutes so we, we get in our men not our men, but, you know, it just, I don't know, is that, there's something about that empty smile, like, that I just, I struggle a little bit with, just, I kind of feel for them, I mean, they're doing it because they want to do it, but. Like our algebra, your weekly horoscope. No, go away. Sorry, I would not lower myself alongside. Or boom, or okay. Oh, here's a nice story. This is about Leslie Dahl. thinking the same thing, man or woman, don't know, don't care, Leslie, could be either, so Leslie Dart has planted 372,290 trees across Canada over the past three summers, and inspired so many others. A specific number, isn't it? Why not say three hundred and seventy two thousand or over three hundred and seventy thousand? But why the two hundred and ninety? It seems a little bit made up. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. It's just just how do you keep track of the amount of trees before you say or you count them before you say that mind you over three summers so maybe he he grew them himself in his garden like root are they called rootlings or you know like little trees grew them from seeds and then planted them. I don't know. I used to have a friend who did that. He was a environmentalist. This was back in 2005, about 2006. And I lived with him, lived in the same house as him. in a loving relationship it was just housemates I 
liked him as a friend. Sometimes, and the reason I say sometimes is because he had a habit of recycling things that were not rubbish. Honestly, he'd just take stuff and he put it in the back of my friend, my other friend's car, ready to take it to the uh, recycling place. And I'd always have to stop and check the back of the car before they drove off to make sure he hadn't put any of that stuff in there. My friend's razor was in there without my television. Like, he'd been in my bedroom, my television. He just, he just laughed. How can that be recycling? If anything, it's the opposite of being environmentalist. Surely part of being an environmentalist is using something as long as you can while it still works. Instead of just buying a new thing to replace it and getting rid of that. And he just continued laughing. It was almost sometimes he just had this look on his face like, was the only one that knew that it had just farted and we were all about to smell it. It was that kind of knowing smile. The no <laughs> grin. Uh, but he was cool. I liked him as a, as a friend. Uh, a young woman in Canada's Satch Watch Sat Sats Sas Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan province recently garnered 8.7 million views on a TikTok video of her planting 4,545 trees in a single day. That is a huge amount of trees in a day. Especially for some one person to do it. Even if you bend over once. That's four. Can you imagine bending over four and a half thousand times? Blimey. Mind you, I think I'd just lay on the ground and just roll around. Eventually, I wouldn't just stay there forever, but my back couldn't take the bending over. It just reminds me of my friend. He used to do that. He used to just randomly plant trees. I'd be, we lived in the we lived in the countryside, and it was about a forty-five minutes first half an hour was down one road which was kind of a, a very busy road that led to the motorway but on either side was countryside field, fields and stuff like that so we'd be walking down the pavement towards you know, making our way towards town and I'd be talking to him suddenly I'd see him jump out of the bushes and just planted another tree I think although I didn't see him with a tree but he was very tall he probably could just carry around a normal length tree under his arm and no one would notice very tall that 
that smell, not that smell, but the not blimey, I didn't mean that word. That. <laughs> I've been meaning to say that. I know that the day is great. I remember we were meditating. We used to go meditating. And at the local place that we meditated, and he was, as I said, he was very tall. And he had, I think, three cushions that he was sitting on. And I was sitting next to him. I might have been on a chair, because at that point I couldn't sit on cushions anymore. I remember hearing a big bang, like, Wah. he fell asleep and he fell off the cushions. And he couldn't stop laughing, like, I couldn't stop laughing either. My, my laughing calmed down, you know, a little bit once I realised he wasn't injured. But he was, we were laughing. And nobody opened their eyes. Not one person that I could see. Everyone pretended to be deep in meditation and not noticing. When that's, that's not what meditation is. You still hear what's going on around you. Still, you can still sense. If anything, it it magnifies what you can hear, what you can smell, and the air on your face and the feeling of your body. It's it's a mindfulness thing. You're more in touch with how you're feeling and your surroundings don't bother you, but you're aware of them, so if someone yells loudly and you start hearing them laughing hysterically, how can you not open your eyes, but hey, I'm just, I guess I was never very professional, I'm still not. I wonder if he's still planting trees, <laughs> jumping in and out of bushes. He's, he just used to disappear and suddenly came, he turned, because he had such long legs, they're very bouncy legs. It's almost like he had springs on the ends of his feet, on his feet, you know, and he just bounced back. He'd look around and just carry on walking, like nothing has happened. It's those days, you know, it's a long time ago now. And I miss getting home from work and going upstairs into my bedroom and checking that my stuff was still there. Yeah, I know. The past day. is simply a popular summer job for university students that can nevertheless absorb some people with its deeply meaningful monotony. That's a weird word to use. For sometimes 15 hours a day lazily slams a spade into the ground, levers out the dirt, drips in a seedling, tramps it down with her foot and moves on to the next one. I tell you what, you just gotta be proper fit, physically, really physically fit to be doing that. In five and a half thousand, in no, four and a half thousand, in one day. So it's not just four and a half thousand times bending over, it's four and a half 
thousand times, dig him into the ground and put him dirt out. And then four and a half thousand times, put him the dirt back in. And then four and a half thousand times, stomp him down on the, on the ground, which would probably be maybe two or three times. So that's 15,000. Blimey. This is good. That's cool, isn't it? It's nice. Nice story. Just reminds me of my friend, though. I remember um, I moved away from there. I lived, uh, I left my bike outside and I came home from work and it was missing and I thought oh no he's back but it wasn't him that was actually stolen dance for me <laughs> this is interesting I've never seen anything like this before dance away your tears with this grief disco kiosk Fandango Discotheca. I'm guessing it's not. It's from another country. Just because that's, that's not English, is it? Fandango Discotheca. I wonder what country. French. Italian. Samoan maybe, moved by a desire to help people with grief and angst um, and other stuff artist Annie Nicholson wanted to create a space where the public can shake out grief and unravel their feelings, emotions she collaborated with the Lost Project and blah 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 Six seven Berlin, a street sound system to realize this ambitious public art project. So the kiosk, I, I, I'll describe it to you. It's pink, and do you remember the fly, the movie The Fly, where he transports himself into another kiosk from one transporter to the other but a fly gets in and then you know but it reminds me of one of those but in pink um, it looks fairly big actually but then I can't see how tall she is say probably it could probably fit in this room but there wouldn't be much room around it it'd have to be dismantled because how would it get through the door so it's the kiosk is a refurbished K67 kiosk a modern art modernist design gem associated with ad hoc post Soviet spaces chip stalls newspaper stands student cafes and shelters which evokes a legacy of European unity and collaboration I, I can see that now a newspaper stand yeah So, as well as DJ sets, there'll be meditation and yoga workshops. I thought that you'd go inside the kiosk and dance, but it's not. It's, or oh, is it? Okay. Of 
my understand is you you lead it from inside there. Okay. But it's the dance floor has been a space of silence and safety as I have navigated the many great li while. There is no wrong need to check out the Gorillas Glee, blah blah blah. Okay, they talk about dance and how's that's gone over my head. I don't have the body for dancing. I have the body for eating pizza. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. That's nice, isn't it? So this year's annual convention for the American Veterinary Medical Association has been turned into a medical care drive for the companion animals of the homeless. saying that having a dog, a companion animal, can be really healthy and healing for somebody. But they clearly haven't met Vinny, have they? He's, fa he's fast asleep on the bed. Can you believe my little boy? He's got so much energy. And no matter what he does during the day, whether he runs around or he sleeps, whatever, at night, usually when he goes to bed, he's in bed for a good 10 to 12 hours. Fast asleep. We went to bed at 10 o'clock last night. It's now 8.23 in the, in the morning. I woke up at four and went back to bed for a couple of hours, but I woke up at four, fast asleep, didn't get up, um, and he's still asleep now at half eight. Now, I'm guessing when I go in there in ten minutes or whatever, either he'll just stay asleep or he'll jump excited, in which case I'll need to take him out. But sometimes, you know, I'll go back to bed, so I'll wake up at four, maybe I'll go back at half five, sleep for a bit. Have <laughs> I need to rest after being awake for an hour and a half. just say, oh, it's just you, it's you again, and then just go back to sleep. I don't think he remembers, so when he wakes up, uh, let's have a look. This is interesting. A man takes a mirror 
a selfie with the same barber for 50 years. As we sit in a chair non-stop. changes it a bit, doesn't it? He's taken five pictures. <laughs> Instead of 50 pictures, I thought maybe it was every year. And while the camera model changes, um, over time it's the same two good friends, a barber and his customer, just getting older together. So in 1973, the newspaper photographer snapped a black and white selfie with his stylish barber Joe Pace. Um, so there's a picture of them on the left and there's a picture of him now on the right. The same barber 50 years later. I tell you what, the barber looks amazing. on the left, it looks like he's in his 20s, and now he must got to be in his 70s, he really does look it, wow, blimey, I wonder if they'd say the age of them, 1973, so you took five pictures, 73, 1985, 2007, 2015, and 2023. So it wasn't every 10 years, was it really? Um, but I know I'm, I'm picking points, but I think it would have been cool if he'd done it every year. doesn't say their ages, I'm, ju I'm just, <sighs> just, just interested because they've both got to be in their 70s, I would say, although in each photo the barber smile gets bigger and Sam has been sported a new camera each time, ending at eight, he's 78 with an iPhone. So that's the, blimey, I didn't think he'd, even he don't look 78. Oh, he's got some of the other pictures as well. Like, he's got all five now. That was, that was cheeky. Very cheeky. The two pictures they showed at the beginning. One was from 1973. Other one was from 2015, so it was an up to date one, so it does look older now. And it's eight years, but still, like they, why would they show the first? Do you think they showed the first and last, wouldn't you? Just, just generally, that would be the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Like Sam, he looks the same. He looks the same from 2015 to now. He pretty much looks the same from 2007 to now. I was going to say he's got the same face, but I guess we all know, haven't we? Really? Blimey. 
That's nice, isn't it? It's weird. Not weird, but the um the hairdresser seems to look happier as the photos go. So the older he gets, the happier he looks. In the last photograph, he looks really happy. That's nice. Um, okay, so this... <laughs> I don't know if there's any other stuff. There's loads of stories. Fossil hunter finds a four foot long mammoth tar tusk sitting in plain sight. I'll be honest, if I saw a four, four foot mammoth's tusk on the floor or sticking out of the ground, I might not go near it. Because it might be connected to a mammoth. It's the old saying, isn't it? If you come across a giant's toenail, the giant won't be far away. I don't know who says that. I guess I do, but... <laughs> miss their classrooms during the summer. Now I was never a teacher, but I never missed school <laughs> during the summer. I loved holidays. Just I think um, like a week before we went back to school September it'd be time to go to the shops to buy new clothes and new trousers and shirts and stuff for school because we'd all generally grown and uh, I remember my dad saying why your brother's going clothes shopping why are you smiling none of us want to go and do this but you're smiling and I said look I'm still smiling from the day that we broke up for holidays I'm still smiling from that I haven't stopped and he said it's, it's weird that you need to tell me that because I think I spent six weeks with you and I haven't noticed. I said maybe you need to meditate. None of that happened. I don't know why I said it. Um, all his training days are so his slack line of wings. it really the monkey was all just have a look see what uh, if there's anything that jumps out at me oh blimey the world's largest 3D printed building is a horse bar I've seen these, uh, I don't know if it was on telly or it was a documentary on YouTube, building houses with 3D machines, printing houses, and they're, they're going 24 hours. 
miles a day. And there was about, there was quite a few houses being built at the same time. And there was just a couple of people keeping an eye on the machines. That was it. No bricklayers, no anything. Just it was all just being done. and building and stuff necessarily but that's something I'd definitely like to see with my own eyes just to see something like that in action especially from start to finish because it takes about two days or something to build I might have exaggerated that but who's ever going to know takes two hours. It literally is instantly done. So there. So I'm going to go well, 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 well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go. So please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Take care. Shall speak to you very soon. Lots of love.